why and how do you think, what kinds of methods do you believe are good that break us out of mental habituation, this rigidity where we're still functional, we go to work, we take care of a family, maybe we're not, we're not abusive, you know, but we are living like an average lifestyle and we simply know like, man, I, I know there's more to my life than what I'm showing up for right now. Mm-hmm. How do you with your clients get past the, no, you know, it's not, it's not your back and I don't even think it's your diet. It's the way you think, or it's, it's a, it's a disempowering pattern that I'm noticing in you. How do you approach people on a psycho spiritual level? Well, because that's a deep question. I'll just kind of give you the basics. Um, <laughs> The first criteria for healing and growing and and becoming is stop bullshitting yourself. <laughs> Most people just <laughs> constantly lie to themselves and yeah. tell themselves stories. And you know, it takes a lot of work to get fat. It takes five, 10, 15 years of it, of not paying attention to give yourself cancer. I mean, the body is a miraculous vehicle that does not want to be unhealthy and does everything it can. And it has this thing called instincts to guide you. I mean, how many people, instead of getting up and going pee or having a poop when they need to keep playing video games or watching porn or whatever, till they train themselves right out of their voiding reflex. And next thing you know, they got constipation and and bladder infections. Mm. How many people feel their body saying, get up and move, but ignore it and sit in chairs for hours on end and their posture gets all screwed up, their breathing gets all screwed up, their organs aren't moving properly. How many people know they're tired, but they keep drinking coffee and and taking pills for headaches because they work all day at a job they don't like, so they don't start living till they get home and have a joint in their hand or a bottle of wine or and then they got to watch late night TV just to sort of check out of the uh, prison that they've put themselves into. Um, how many people know that they're not in love with somebody, but they're too chicken to go off and be on their own and find somebody more compatible to them. So they stay in relationships that rot and 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 ultimately end up teaching their children how to have a screwed up relationship because they're not brave enough to be honest with themselves. And I could just go on and on and on on that one, meaning being honest with yourself. Second of all, I just say, are you paying attention when the pain teacher shows up in your life? How many mm. times have you hurt your back? How many times have you got sh- shitty skin How many times have your body been all swollen up? How much time have you spent running around to doctors and therapists because your brain's not working, yet you've seen a thousand times in front of you books on gluten intolerance, shows on gluten intolerance, and you look at it and you say, oh, that's me, that's me, while you're eating cookies and you go eat some more pasta and then you watch another show and eat some more shit and you just never – Wake up to the fact that the pain teacher just turns the volume up. If you want to keep going, yeah, we can cut your colon out. Yeah, you can end up with arthritis from all that gluten, and you can mesidify the shit out of your body and get yourself a parasite infection, a fungal infection. You can end up on 30 different drugs, all poisoning the hell out of you because you're not telling yourself the truth and you're not listening to the pain teacher. Really, if we just be honest with ourselves, have a clear sense of what our dream is for ourselves and our life in any given moment. And we listen to what we're doing, pay attention to what we're doing that's creating pain for ourselves, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, like believing in a God that's going to burn you in hell when there's a lot better gods you can shop for. That's like wearing a shoe that doesn't fit just because your mom gave it to you six years ago, but now you're a foot taller, but you're still wearing the old shoe and it hurts like hell, but everyone else is in pain and they keep going to the same God. So I might as well be like them. Well, that's called not growing up. It's called the eternal child. Mm -hmm. When you become an eternal child, you're a, a victim to anybody that wants to control you and take your money. And so here we are in a sea of children who haven't grown up that don't listen to themselves about God, about food, about sex, about money, about exercise, about sleep. Uh, They don't pay attention to their thoughts. And they're wondering why the world's so fucked up and why 
it's so scary out there and what's going on. It's like, well, you don't, you can't wait for a crisis to decide to get your shit together. That's like, uh, mm waiting till you in a crisis to learn how to speak to your soul, but your ego's got such a stranglehold on you that you'll never learn to hear God until you can learn to let God choose what socks you're going to wear and uh, what foods you should eat. So, you know, that's how I get people going. I say, let's mm. just, let's be honest. Don't bullshit me. I'm a bad guy to bullshit. I can read people like a fucking book. I do it. I've been doing this for 37 <laughs> years. I tell people, if you want to know what a shaman is, I'll tell you. A shaman is someone who's played all the games you're playing, but it's a lot better at them than you are. <laughs> Meaning, I've already seen all this shit because I had to work through it myself, in myself, and I've seen all the games that can be played with money, sex, whatever, because I've been coaching people for 37 years. So I've had children for 37 years, you could say. And some of the most rich and famous and some of the most poor and screwed up. And how much money you have is no indication of how evolved you are, how awake you are yeah. at all. You can be very, very rich, but very, very still a child and still lost. And a lot of them are. In fact, I got to tell you a real quick short story. Please. You might know of it, but I got to share it because spirit wants it to come out of me. There was this billionaire who had all these health problems. He was emotionally a mess. Health was a mess. So he told his assistant, you've got to find somebody to help me. I've seen all these doctors and all these psychologists and therapists, and no one's doing a damn thing for me. So he said, I don't care how much money it costs or how long it takes you. You need to go find someone that can really help me. Well, it took the guy a few years, but finally he flew back. Having found a true master spiritual teacher in the Himalayan mountains, 13, 14,000 feet, where he had to walk for days on foot with a donkey and a guide to get to this guy. And he talked to the master and the master says, oh, I can probably help him if he wants to be helped. So he flies back, gets his master. He says, we're going to have to go on a long journey, and it's going to be tough because we got to march, hike for days, but this guy can help you. He said, I don't care. I'll do anything. So he finally makes the journey. He got, flies to India. He takes the donkeys and the trails, and it takes a long time to get there. He's a little bit agitated from how hard it was to get to the guy. And he shows up, and there's this yogi sitting there on, on a woolen blanket, with a loincloth, long bearded, matted hair, looking like he lives in the wild. And the first thing the rich guy says to him, he says, if you're so poor, what the hell makes you think you can help me? And the yogi looks at him and says, if you're so rich, why did you have to come all this way for my help? Mm -hmm. And there you have it. Yeah. Yeah, interesting Because point. he wasn't rich in the right areas. That's the point. For sure. There's definitely, you know, there's definitely an aspect of overcompensating in business and needing more and more and having a type of greed that allows you to hoard more with you, one single individual, than most could ever dream of and something that could massively help other people. And, and you see that there's all these even blocks in front of people. There's these like, you know, well, it's, it's my right and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, th this is, this is the way the system is. And there's a natural pecking order to things, all these excuses that, that keep us from even seeing what is the best use of myself? What is the best use of my time? and the gifts that I bring. And um, it definitely is something where a lot of people, they, they fill a void with money. And it's not the only way it ever happens for sure. Um, but, you know, th thank goodness there, there are those who actually, they find their abundance by actually losing some of the shackles of their feeling small um, early on. And they, their entire life is dedicated and devoted to others. Make sure y'all head over to benjosephstewart.com.
become a member. You'll have access to the growing library of deeper dives where I talk about all the stuff that I really can't talk about on YouTube. Make sure you get involved in the Discord chat. That's where a lot of the conversation is happening, talking about new theories, being able to interweave into the greater conversation that is how we awaken infinity. That's our highest potential. And I just want to remind you, you are the most powerful technology ever known to creation. Wield it like an artist with a conscience.